Hello everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature, and it's Friday, which if you're not aware, means it's time for some Obscurities in Literature. Now this book, I will admit, I am out of the comics loop for the most part. I tend to just pick up collected editions here and there on the whims of, you know, whatever fancy strikes me at the moment, or every now and then, what... Amazon might think I'm interested in. And this one popped up out of nowhere for me, and I was like, well, hmm, this had an interesting cover, and I know absolutely nothing about it, but this was totally my kind of book. So anyway, I speak of The Last God, book one of the Fellspire Chronicles, and as of this filming, it is the only book of the Fellspire Chronicles, but who knows, maybe there will be more in the future. Now, let me throw that caveat out there that, yes, it is book one, but it is a self-contained book, and quite a book it is. And it is primarily done by Philip Kennedy Johnson, the writer, and Ricardo Federici, the artist, along with a slew of colorists that really uh, kick this book up to the next level. And I know uh, Mr. Federici did quite a bit of painted work in this book as well. It's a big, nice, thick tome here, you'll notice. And the first thing that really grabbed my attention upon lifting it out of its cardboard tomb when it arrived was the thickness of the cover. And I remembered why I'd seen in a review somewhere somebody had mentioned it. I mean, this thing is like library cover thickness, and it's... Oh, what's this? Now, this is pretty swanky. I gotta say, right off the bat, you don't... I, well, maybe you do see this stuff with DC books. I don't tend to pick up a whole lot of DC books, but when I do, they are well worth the money. So check this out. The actual interior cover is a whole bunch of maps of various locations that probably mean nothing to you right now, having not read the book. And if you have, then, well, maybe it makes sense. The Black Stair being a very integral part of it. The Pinnacle being a location that takes place in the book. And then all of that actually completely unfolds into a full-on map of Cain Anun the name of the lands that the Fellspire Chronicles take place in. The land of the Unmen. I'm quite curious to see more about that. So as I attempt to figure out how to put this all back together again, the only thing I think that could have been even cooler is if it had a giant super wraparound cover, like some 70s library hardcover paperback. But... That's that's a point I can't really knock against the book. Then it's got like a, this old tone. Like, look at this. This is pure. This is what I'm talking. This is like, maybe it's just the books I read from the library as a kid growing up. You know, I was one of those kids that combed the sci-fi and fantasy shelves, just looking at the covers. Half the time I hated the book, but man, they had some awesome illustrations. And I mean, that, that kind of stuff is always set well with me. We see one of the main characters and one of the villains. I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about them. Get another glimpse of the maps. When you open the book up on both bookends there. So yeah, this story I thought was quite interesting. Uh, first of all, the artwork. Super, super nice. We have... A fellowship of warriors that banded together to stop the dark and evil gods from destroying the world. You know, been there, done that, right? Sounds pretty tropey. But in this case, well, things don't go as well as they had hoped. And this is my kind of fantasy. I, I read somebody's comment somewhere, probably on Amazon, that it was a bit too dark for their tastes, a bit too, you know, berserk-like fantasy. And to me, it didn't get dark enough. Now, the subject matter sure is, but the tone, at least of the artwork, I thought was a lot lighter. Now, one of the neat things about this, as well as having quite an interesting story, uh, we have our original heroes that... 30 years ago, ventured forth to stop this evil god. And then we have the story jump to 30 years later, and the sins of the past begin to repeat themselves. So there's all kinds of these little lore nuggets throughout the book. And then we have annotated songs that pop up during the book as well, which is actually pretty cool. I guess one gripe I've got is, and this is more a DC gripe in general, is that... 
while it is a little bit larger than some of their books, it's not as big as like some of those massive oversized, like the absolute books, obviously it's not going to be that big, but I'm thinking more like a lot of images, oversized hardcovers, or at least the ones I tend to pick up a little bit larger. Maybe this is, I don't know if it's a typical comic scale, but yeah, there's some bad monsters in this. Some very bad dudes calling the shots. Of which I'm all here for. And like a lot of modern fantasy, uh, the authors really did try to play with a lot of the tropes, subvert that you have a lot more modern touches to some of the typical things that we see. There's the elves and dwarves and some other things, which we're not going to spend too much time on. I don't want to spoil anything, obviously. But there are plenty of monsters, if that's something that you enjoy. Plenty of big, eldritch abominations. I guess and there is some nice painted sections here and there, as well as the covers. As I was saying, some of the painted sections. Now, I want to show you guys something really cool. So we have the original 12-issue miniseries, and... I liked it. I enjoyed it. I thought the ending was, was a nice way to wrap things up. Like I said, all throughout we've got these nice little nuggets of lore. And my first trip through the book, I didn't really read them, but that's just how I am. But then I went back and I actually checked them out. But wait a minute, check this out. Check out the, the, the story's already finished at this point, right? Well, then we have this nice little afterwards story detailing some events that kind of fill in the gaps between when things happen, which I'm not going to bother really letting you know about too much. But then we get to this whole back section, another 30 pages of nothing but background lore, which is really cool. Again, we get information on all the various gods. Why are they doing all that? Why are they throwing all this lore in here? Well, let me show you why. We get into the currencies, why this almost looks like an RPG lore. <gasps> what is this? Monster stat blocks. Yeah. This is so freaking cool, and this is something that I really would be pretty pleased to see show up in other books. And I know, I know it's been done before, and I'm sure it's going to get done again, but I thought this was a really nice touch. They have a whole section here, BC area, of a bunch of the monsters, the flowering dead being the main enemies that take part throughout most of the story. And some of the various other creatures, we see it different points of the story but yeah check that out full-on stat blocks and everything background info the harpies they're in there i thought that was really cool and then we get into the magic which i thought was another interesting thing the way magic works in the story magic items you got the whole kitten here playable subclasses i mean there's some of the main characters paladins the ferryman, ferryman being a big part of this, and the elves. I thought that was a really cool thing. So, I know that's made with like the open game license, but to me, this was a really cool, complete package. And I'll be honest, the first time I saw the book one, I was like, uh, really? I don't want to get myself wrapped up in another, you know, ongoing, long saga of big honking books. I got enough of those, right? I've got Berserk literally taking an entire shelf of my bookshelf right now with all, what, 10, 11 volumes, I think. Yeah. So I've got enough of that, all my Jordowski books and things like that. But to me, this was like just such a nice, complete package. I think the story was quite succinct. There were things that, you know, parts I was like, yeah, it was okay. It could have been done better. I thought, yeah, we're relying too much on, you know, past tropey type stuff. But for the most part, I got to say, this really hit all the right notes for me. I think if you dig high fantasy, dark fantasy, it definitely gets dark. And it's not like a nice, perfect win and the good guys are all shiny. Not at all. Um, a lot of the characters get a lot of characterization. I was about to say customization because I can hear somebody going through a character select screen in the other room and building a character. Okay, anyway. Um, but, yeah, I think if you're interested, if you like high fantasy, if you like a nice, complete epic all wrapped up for the most part in one whole book with a whole lot of lore and background that you can dig into on your own time and enjoy even more. And honestly, I gotta say, I, I'm probably gonna go back for a third read now. 
I had my first one after I, I read it a couple weeks ago. Went back, reread it this past week before filming just to get my mind back on it. But also I wanted to see there's some things that get mentioned throughout the story and how everything fits into place. It really worked out perfectly. So yeah, uh, we'll have a link down below if you guys want to check it out. This is a pretty new book, so it should not have ridiculous uh, aftermarket prices, thankfully. So hopefully if you are in the mood for some fantasy stuff, this is definitely going to fit the bill. And hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I did. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.